In this episode of Cloud Performance Atlas, I help some bacon lovers profile Kubernetes startup time. Will their performance end up with the perfect crunch? Stay tuned to find out. After my work with the Foodie Picks team, another food-based company approached me to help with more cold boot performance problems. Bacon Live is a mobile network for chefs where you can watch live video feeds of people cooking food, annotations included. The back end for Bacon Live was using Kubernetes, which is a great tool to help you manage, contain, and deploy images to your various instances in a seamless and powerful manner. Sadly though, reporting back details on cold boot performance was not something it did easily. So before we could solve Bacon Live's issues, we had to figure out how to profile pod startup time. After digging around, neither the uh, Cloud Console, Stackdriver, or Heapster surfaced any direct numbers with respect to the boot time for pods. There was, however, a single place where some startup time information was being surfaced, in the kube control get pod method. It turns out that calling this function will return a JSON string with some timestamped information relating to the pod startup phases. Here, you can see that the pod status emits the scheduled, initialized, and ready phases, each with a timestamp that tells us relatively when it occurred. So for this example, you can see that it took about one second to go from initialized to ready. So we can at least get some information about how long things take to boot. Now, to get a sense of the average startup performance and what it looks like, we need to create a loop where we kill the current pods, let new ones boot up, read their timestamp data, and then repeat. Do that about 100 times or so, and we end up with something that looks like this, which shows us that for a blank pod, it takes about three milliseconds to boot it up, which, by the way, is a lot faster than booting a Compute Engine instance. And the reason for that is that when a Kubernetes pod boots up, it's not starting a brand new VM each time. It's just booting containers. Uh, see, Kubernetes pods are made up of a series of containers which provide endpoints and services for the instance itself. A pod is considered ready once all the containers have been initialized and their health checks pass. Now, to help facilitate proper boot up, the initialization process breaks up containers into two main groups. The first is the init group, which initializes specific containers in a linear order. The second is the parallel group, which initializes the remaining containers all at once. This setup has some interesting quirks and chances to be problematic. For instance, if a single container during the init phase takes a long time, it'll block loading of everything else. So to understand where our pod boot up performance is going, we need to be able to time the specific startup duration of each container in each group. So let's start with the init containers. After a bit of digging, we found that the Kubernetes get pod command will return the status of the target pod during boot up time. And when you have the init containers defined, the status field will list the status of the init containers. Uh, for example, a status of init 1.6 indicates that one of six init containers has completed successfully, which means that we can pull the pod every 10 milliseconds or so and get a sense of how long each stage is taking to boot up. When we graph that information, it becomes really easy to see that for this example, the database initialization and stats frameworks are taking the longest time to boot. Now, timing the parallel containers is much trickier since there's no timestamp or extra data emitted when a container makes the transition from initialized to being ready to handle requests. So in order for this information to be surfaced, we have to probe our endpoints much like health checks or readiness probes would. These systems sit in a tight loop and touch the endpoints until a specific response is received, which lets the load balancer know that this container is ready to handle traffic. So for our setup, we modify each container to expose a new entry point, which returns the string success. Repeatedly repolling this endpoint from an external location yields three different states. Uh, first is error which means that the service is not up or running yet. Second is code uh, 400 or 500 series, which means that the service is booting, but the endpoint is not available yet, or finally, success. If we pull the endpoints every 10 milliseconds or so, we can figure out how long the container sits in each of these states and chart it as a pretty graph. So armed with this information, we could finally start looking at what was causing Bacon Live's performance problems. But for this episode, we're out of time. If you'd like to know more, check out the rest of the Cloud Performance Atlas content. And remember, when it comes to performance, every millisecond counts.